So good morning, everybody. I'm not sure if Melinda has let you in yet, but if you are uh, joining us just now, we are so excited that you're here today. We've got some great information, some great speakers that you'll hear from, and we'll probably give folks just another minute or two to get up and running, and then we'll kick it off. Jamie, I see that you're that you unmuted yourself. Would you mind muting yourself real quick? Mel, can you mute participants for them? Oh, there, there he goes. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, Mel, if you can give me kind of any indication. Oh, I see here where we're at 106. So um, I think we had over 300 registers. So maybe we'll give it one more minute and then we'll we'll kick it off. All righty, folks. I think for the sake of time, we've got quite a few folks that are joined. Um, I think we'll go ahead and, and start off. So first of all, thank you again. We're super excited that you're with us today. Um, you know, we've got some great speakers, like I mentioned, that you'll hear from. Uh, and so <clears throat> today's training is cleverly named uh, Those Darn DPAs, <laughs> the Mythbusters edition. Uh, we wanted to... Um, create this training to help bust some of those myths about down payment assistance programs out there. So today's training is, is being co-hosted by myself uh, with the Texas State Affordable Housing Corporation, otherwise known as TSHAC, and Down Payment Resource, otherwise known as DPR. My name is Sarah Eleanor, Senior Manager of Homeownership Programs at TSHAC, and I'm joined by Sean Moss, Director of Operations at Down Payment Resource, or DPR. So many of you on the call, uh, I'm assuming are most are realtors or maybe some loan officers. You, you may know that June is National Homeownership Month and TSHAC and Down Payment Resource are teaming up in several ways this month to answer some frequently asked questions and debunk some common myths about down payment assistance programs. So in addition to this training, we, which is geared toward realtors and loan officers, uh, we also released a podcast segment and a blog post last week that was geared toward home buyers. You can find those resources on TSHAC's website uh, and we really encourage you to share those with your home buyers. And actually, uh, Katie Claflin, our Senior Director of Communications and Development is on the call today. She's gonna put that link to those resources in the chat feature right now. Uh, so now that I've kind of plugged some of the other resources we released this month, let's focus on today's training. Uh, like I mentioned, we have a great agenda. We're going to start off by sharing some information about down payment resource and TSHAC, as well as some current trends about the state of down payment assistance programs nationwide. We're also going to be providing some information about the specific assistance options that we offer here at TSHAC. And then we're going to address and bust <laughs> the top five myths that we often see surrounding down payment assistance programs. And we're super fortunate that we have five of our top participating loan officers 
that are joining us for the, for the discussion. And each one of them is going to be addressing a different myth and providing some real world examples to demonstrate why that particular myth shouldn't keep you from educating yourself about down payment assistance and then sharing these resources with your home buyers. And finally, we'll wrap up with some best practices for both loan officers and realtors and open it up for a Q&A. We, um, we do anticipate that the presentation portion of the present or the will take about an hour, which leaves about 20 to 30 minutes at the end for questions. So if you have questions as you go along, we will have Katie Claflin in the background kind of monitoring the chat feature as we go. Um, but I do encourage you to try to hold your questions to the end because we will address those questions aloud and we will um, you know, be kind of fielding those questions out to some of our experts that are on the call. So everybody will be able to hear the question aloud and you'll be able to hear the answer as well. So with that, I'm actually gonna hand it over to Sean and let him introduce himself and down payment resource. So, so Sean, you wanna take it over from here? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. So my name is Sean Moss, Director of Operations with Down Payment Resource. We track and monitor, if we can go to the next slide, all of the down payment assistance and other home buyer programs around the country, including all of the programs that TSHAC provides. And we integrate with various MLS partners. We work with lenders. All of this is designed around helping prospective home buyers understand the down payment opportunities that are out there for them. Um, we also have a subscription tool for agents, real estate agents and loan officers, and we'll show you that uh, towards the end of the webinar here, that allows you to broadcast the, the availability and raise awareness of TSHAC and other down payment assistance programs. And, also, and, and through that tool, connect with consumers that are interested in buying a home, but maybe didn't think it was time or didn't think they were ready because they have misperceptions about down payment requirements and so forth. So we're going to tackle some of those issues today. But uh, the long and short of it is we track and monitor the details of all these programs. And through real estate agents and loan officers and others, we try to make consumers aware of these opportunities so that they can start to more aggressively pursue home ownership. And if we can go to the next slide real quick. Um, ultimately, our goal, again, is to help you connect home buyers to the down payment help they need and overcome what we all know to be the largest obstacle to home ownership, which, again, is the down payment. So I'll jump back in um, and just tell you a little about TSHAC now that you heard what DPR has to offer. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We were created at the direction of the Texas legislature. So we are kind of a quasi-governmental agency in that the governor appoints our board members. Um, we have state oversight in that regard, but we do not receive any kind of state appropriated funds, nothing from the general fund, no taxpayer dollars. So we are a truly you know, self-sufficient organization, but our mission is to serve the housing needs of low to moderate income Texans. And so we do a lot of things here at TSHAC. We help developers build and rehabilitate both multifamily and single family affordable housing throughout the state of Texas. We help them, we help homeowners buy their homes through our home ownership programs, which is what we're gonna to talk to you a little bit more about today. And then we help those home buyers stay in their homes because we do various things. We require them to take home buyer education before they can use our home buyer programs. We want them to be successful homeowners. Uh, we also train housing counselors and nonprofit staff throughout the state that are providing home buyer education, financial education, credit counseling, those types of services, foreclosure prevention. We help bring training to them for free so that they can then bring that knowledge back to their communities and hopefully create more uh, stability. <clears throat> Next slide. As a part of our buy component, you'll hear more about our homeownership programs today. Um, our Homes for, Texas, Home, Homes for Texas Heroes and Home Sweet Texas program. Um, basically, between the two programs, anybody can potentially qualify to use our down payment assistance and mortgage credit certificate programs. Today, we have um, some really wonderful speakers that you're going to hear from. These are 
basically part of our top lending team here at TSHAC. Um, and they are all members of our lender advisory council. So we rely on them for their expertise in a lot of ways. We're thankful that they were able to join us today. So I'll introduce them. Jamie Hodge with Guild Mortgage Company. We have Aubrey Miller with Cardinal Financial. Jordan O'Brien with Cardinal Financial. Gracie Perez with Town Square Mortgage and Investments. And last but not least, Stacey Lynn Shriver with Premier Nationwide Lending. So we're very thankful to have them on the call today and, and excited to hear from them. And I think the next slide is Sean. He's going to tell us all about the current state of home buyer programs. Yeah, so we get asked a lot, uh, especially in the last year, what's going on with down payment assistance programs. Obviously, the fact that we're here doing this with TSHAC indicates that down payment assistance has clearly not gone away. In fact, last year for many down payment assistance providers, uh, last year was a banner year. Record volumes, record mortgage volume, record DPA volume. That's all purchase business being done with down payment assistance, helping buyers get into homes. So uh, right now, about 80, 81, 82% of all home buyer programs across the country are funded. That accounts for all housing finance agencies, municipalities, nonprofits, uh, all the other entities that provide some form of home buyer assistance. Um, to break that down a little bit, though, you know, we, we hear DPA or down payment assistance. That's a pretty broad term. So we wanted to just illustrate what kind of help is out there. 78% of all of the home buyer programs out there are down payment or closing cost assistance. That is at help closing with the cost to get to and through a closing. But there are other types of home buyer assistance out there. T-Shack and others have first mortgage products that offer higher LTVs, MI uh, benefits, lower interest rates, and so forth. Uh, mortgage credit certificates. We'll talk a little bit more about that today too, but there are a lot of MCCs out there. That's not at closing help, but it's a great long-term value add for a buyer who wants a uh, long-term tax advantage. Uh, and I guess we'll, we'll cover that more later, but big, big picture of the down payment assistance programs, the, the DPAs or the DAPs, we, we hear all these terms used interchangeably. Sometimes we hear the word grant used a little too loosely, but of the DPA programs that are out there, 67% um, uh, or two thirds of them have deferred payments. What does that mean? You're not making a monthly payment for some period of time or perhaps the life of the first mortgage from, for that down payment assistance program. Almost half or 45% of DPAs are forgivable loans. That means that at some point, some portion or all of that down payment assistance loan is forgiven, which sort of makes it a grant in the future, uh, but no monthly payments and forgivable. In fact, 40% of all DPAs are both forgivable and have deferred payments, meaning there's no monthly payment on the down payment assistance portion, and it's forgivable in part or in full at some point in the future. Now, even within those categories, there are still a lot of variations uh, as to you know for how long the payments are deferred or uh, whether they're forgiven at a certain point in the future or incrementally over time. And then of course you have down payment assistance programs that are actually grants at closing, which does not create a subordinate loan or lien on the property and so forth. So we wanted to break that down a little bit. And then on the next slide, as far as trends among down payment assistance programs, DPAs did not go away. Down payment assistance programs are not going to go away. So just to clarify, every housing finance agency in the country, TSHAC included, remained open last year through COVID, remains open this year, and many of them had record years. And I'll let Sarah speak to that at some point if she wants to, but uh, as, as far as TSHAC's record year, but that's again, all purchase business. We're not doing refis with housing finance agencies, right? DPAs are not used for refi transactions. We also continue to see new state and local programs uh, launching in markets all over the country. About 81% of all programs are currently funded and active. Now, some people look at that and say, well, why are, what's up with the other 19% of programs? No, there's no period in time when all down payment assistance programs are funded at once. Some of the, the funding sources for these programs are seasonal. So 80, 81, 82%, that's actually a norm and it has been for years. Uh, 81% of programs are currently funded. That's a normal number. Uh, home buyer education is 
probably still largely being done online. That trend will likely continue. But that was one way that DPA providers were able to uh, maintain their programs and stay open last year was by adopting online home buyer education if they hadn't already. So big picture, there are 2,200 some, 2,300 some programs across the country. There are a lot in Texas. TSHAC offers great options. DPAs have not gone away. And today we're going to talk about some of the things that, um, uh, you know, the obstacles, pitfalls, some of the, the misperceptions that are out there. But that's big picture what's going on with down payment assistance. And I will say, Sean, to piggyback on that, 100% uh, of T-Shock's down payment assistance are active. <laughs> they can use any of them. So um, there's no percentage that's not available right now. <clears throat> you, Katie, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So I'll jump in and, and just, you know, you're probably like, okay, well, what can I help with, you know, my home buyers or potential home buyers that I'm going to be working with? What can I offer them? So we have loans with down payment assistance. So basically the down payment assistance that we provide is attached to the mortgage. So we set the interest rate on the mortgage uh, and then that down payment assistance is attached to that. We also have mortgage interest tax credits or mortgage credit certificates that Sean mentioned, um, huge tax savings over the life of that loan. It essentially helps them get some of the interest back that they're paying on their mortgage every year. Uh, and so, you know, their effective tax rate in sense is lower because of that program. <clears throat> uh, we'll talk about the down payment assistance next, um, the next slide, and I'll kind of break down to you what we have available. So we have three options available to your buyer. We have 3% assistance, 4% assistance, and 5%. Um, that 3, 4, and 5% is based on the total loan amount. So for example, if they had a $100,000 mortgage and they chose our 5% assistance option, then they would get $5,000. That $5,000 can be put toward their down payment and or closing costs, um, there's flexibility there. One of the, the misconceptions, which you know, one of our top lenders will go through with you today, is that they don't have to be a first-time home buyer. That is one of the myths that we hear a lot. Um, our program is special in that they do not have to be a first-time home buyer to use the down payment assistance by itself. And like I mentioned, they can use that money to cover their down payment and or closing and therefore lowering their out-of-pocket expenses. Um, the assistance, again, you know, depending on the level that they choose, three, four, or five percent, um, the interest rate that we set will be based on the amount of assistance they choose. So, for example, if they choose the three percent down payment assistance option, they're going to get the lowest interest rate that we have to offer on their mortgage loan, 30 year fixed mortgage loan. Um, if they get the four percent assistance option, their interest rate will go up a little bit. And then it'll go up a little bit again if they choose the 5% assistance option. And then I think that's it. So then we'll talk about the mortgage credit certificate program. Um, kind of a, a joke around here at TSHAC as we call it, you know, the gift that keeps on giving. Um, we also joke around and say that it's really the best kept secret in Texas. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> we don't want it to be a secret. And that's why we continue to work and partner with people like DBR. We work and partner with our top loan officers because we're constantly trying to get the word out uh, and bring awareness to this amazing program. So this particular product is for first-time home buyers. Um, and I will tell you the definition of a first-time home buyer is anybody that hasn't had an ownership interest in a primary residence in the last three years. And that can be waived for veterans or those that are purchasing a home in a targeted area. What this does is it helps them get 20% uh, of the interest that they spend on their mortgage back every year through a special tax credit. So if you think about that, they are able to take that credit every single year they live in their house. So that is going to save them thousands of dollars over the life of their loan. Um, the great thing that realtors should know about and loan officers alike, if there are some of those folks on the call, is that this is a great tool 
for you to use if they are having issues qualifying for a mortgage. Um, the money that they receive back through this tax credit can actually be added to their income up front to help them qualify for the mortgage. So essentially, it can lower a debt to income ratio a little bit that you know might be putting them over the edge and not being able to get qualified. Um, it can also increase their buying power, which I think in this market right now in Texas is huge. It can help them qualify for twenty to thirty thousand dollars more of house because that income can be added to their overall income. Um, I will mention that this MCC program is offered to our Texas heroes. Uh, for free if they are using one of our down payment assistance options as well. So again, really great program. They want to qualify and apply for it before they close. You can't qualify and apply for it after you already close. So it's imperative that, you know, you advocate for your buyers and tell them about this program so they can ask for it from their lender. Um, and if you're working with a great lender, like some of the five of those lenders that are on the call with us today, they'll likely tell them about it, but you still wanna make sure that uh, you're advocating for your buyer and you know, telling the lender about this great program. So I think that's all I had to cover. And then I think we'll, oh, sorry. Um, how does an individual qualify for TSHAC? We wanna make sure uh, that you are looking at the eligibility quiz on our website. So we have a readytobuyatexashome.com. We'll take you directly to the page where you'll find the eligibility quiz. Um, it's also under the home buyers and renters section in the drop down menu. Um, it's four questions. So essentially, at, in about a minute, you're going to know whether or not somebody qualifies to use our assistance. And it's just, it doesn't ask for any kind of personal information. It just, um, you know, asks what, you know, what's your profession, what county do you want to purchase in, um, how many are in your household, and what's your income. And at the, at the very end, it will tell them, okay, yes, your congratulations, you're eligible for the down payment assistance or the down payment assistance and the mortgage credit certificate program. And then it will put them in touch with a lender in their area. Uh, there's even a little video that we worked on a little while ago that kind of tells them how the process works if you'd like to share that with them or even go watch it for yourself uh, if you've never seen it kind of explains how we work with the lenders behind the scenes to make it all happen so it's a seamless process easy process for everybody involved okay i think i'm done with that and then i think um Sean was, are we gonna kick it off with the, the top five myths now? Sorry, we had some technical issues. So if you see me jumping around, I so apologize. Um, I usually am the driver of the slides and we had a last minute um, situation where I had to have Katie drive the slides. So I apologize <laughs> if I seem like discombobulated. Um, okay, so we're gonna start off with the top five myths. Uh, the first one being down payment programs are too expensive. And Ms. Aubrey Miller is with us today, and she's going to kick us off with that first myth. So, Aubrey, you want to go for it? Hello. Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so we do get this a lot um, from agents, from uh, buyers. Um, are they going to be too expensive? Um, and the reality is no. To save up the money and the time that it takes you, that money could be put into a home. And so that's an investment. And that's what I like to tell my clients, number one, is that buying a home is investment. When you're paying rent, um, it's, it's going to your landlord. You're not investing in something. And so you want to have your investment. You want to have uh, that home that's, that's especially now going up in value, I'm sure, as we've all seen. Um, and so this is what it can help you out with. Um, Right now, what we're seeing in this market, and I know all of the agents are seeing, it's a seller's market. And so things like closing costs are not getting covered. I think on almost every contract, I'm seeing the buyer now pay the title policy. Um, if there's not a survey, the buyer's paying the survey. And maybe a year ago, we weren't seeing that. 
um, we were seeing that the seller was paying some of those. Um, they might pay some of the, the buyer's closing costs and that's just not happening now. And so what DPA allows or what the assistance allows, it allows you uh, to put a little bit less out of pocket. Things are just getting more expensive to buy a house and not everybody has that money saved up. Um, and so what that can do is help a buyer that maybe has, maybe they have like 10K saved up uh, for, they thought that would be enough. And it's just not quite enough now. We're not getting that down payment uh, and those closing costs. That's not going to cover all of it. And we know that the seller's not going to cover any of that right now. And so this assistance can help that buyer um, get in a little bit quicker uh, versus having to save up more money now that the seller's not going to pay a lot of that stuff. It's also going to help the buyer not spend all of their money up front. So if the seller, or excuse me, the buyer has that 10K in their account, and um, we know that once you buy a house, there's going to might be other expenses, there might be some repairs, they might need furniture, uh, something might pop up. And so we don't want the buyer necessarily to spend every single the penny they have buying the house. Um, we want them to have some of that money left um, for just a, a rainy day fund, have some reserves there um, if they need to buy furniture, if they need to do a repair, um, things like that that can come up after you get a house. We don't want them to have no money left in the bank. We've got zero dollars in the bank after we bought a house. Um, and so that's something that that's super important for the buyer. But I think right now the biggest thing is too is just not getting that that seller paid closing costs that might have Oops, Aubrey, you're, you just oh, pressed the button that I didn't mean to. Um, and so we're just seeing that that buyers now are needing a little bit more help. Um, the other way it can help, I had a client recently, and I know that you guys are seeing a lot of this with the appraisal waivers. Uh, appraisal came in a little bit short, and instead of having to back out, we were able to go from 3% assistance to 5% assistance, help out that buyer um, and not have him lose money. Uh, or spend more money out of pocket. Uh, it was something we talked about up front. We knew that that could be a possibility. Um, and we knew that we could up that assistance if we needed to. And so the buyer actually brought the same amount of funds that they were planning on bringing to closing uh, with just upping that assistance. Uh, and again, it's something that we talked about up front with them that that could be an option. So that can help y'all out as well. I know that we're seeing those appraisals. I think they're getting a little bit better as the market has kind of seen that that jump up and now we're getting more uh, comps, but that is something that can that can help out there. The other thing with the uh, programs that we get a lot, the rates are going to be a little bit higher than your market rate. Um, can y'all go to the next slide that I that I did? So you kind of see here um, one of the things we get from from our borrowers is oh, the rates higher. Yes, the rate's a little bit higher, but here's the thing. If it's going to take you a year to save up the funds to have your down payment and your closing costs, one, there's a good chance that rates might have gone up and you might be in the same place that the, the down payment assistance are now. Um, and the other thing, the prices of the homes may jump up. And I think we've seen that again in the last year where you didn't buy a, a year ago, you're now paying uh, a, a little bit more for the same amount of house. And so um, that's something that we get a lot. Um, I did a little chart here and it's just, just for FHA, just to give y'all an idea. I know there's just so many different types of loan and assistance programs, but just to give y'all an idea, if you have excellent credit, uh, kind of in the middle credit and then the little bit lower credit range, you can see that excellent credit, they might be at a 2.75 interest uh, in the DPA for a three, percent help is at 3.375. That might be a little off today. I'm sorry, we did this on Friday. Um, so I haven't, it might be a little bit different today, but you can see the difference. So what we did there is we showed you how long it would take to basically cost the buyer money uh, if they were to do a regular FHA uh, versus the down payment assistance. So with excellent credit, after six and a half years, that's when the buyer would start losing money. And so we know most uh, first time home buyers, they're in that five to seven year range of living in that house before they maybe sell and upgrade. And so the likeliness of them losing out on those funds or starting to pay more probably is not going to happen. The other great thing with T-Shack is you can either do a three year forgiveness or you can do a grant, which is immediately forgiven. 
So you already have that equity as well built into the home. So they're really not going to cost our, your borrower a lot more money. It's a really great program that if they don't quite have the funds, utilize this, get into a home and get uh, going on getting uh, that equity built up in a home because homes are a great investment. And again, paying the landlord, that's going nowhere. That's money you'll never see again. You buy a house five to seven years down the line, you don't have to pay back this down payment assistance program. You've got equity in the home. Maybe it, you've got some two more kids now and you need to move up in house. And there you go. You've got you've got the home waiting to buy. It's not necessarily the best thing. Again, we're seeing it now. You waited from last year to this year. Home prices jumping up, seller's market. And so these programs are really, really great uh, to help out our buyers and get them into a home quicker than waiting uh, a year, a year and a half, two years, whatever it is to save up that money to get into a home. That's awesome, Aubrey. Thank you so much. I mean, it's true. You know, the longer you wait, um, <laughs> myth busted. I forgot we added those fun animations in there. Um, the longer you wait, the more expensive it's going to be. And especially, I feel like in so many markets around Texas right now, the longer you wait, the more expensive the houses are going to be, the less inventory there will be. <laughs> yes. And we have clients calling us. I should have bought last year. I should have bought two years ago. I should have listened to you. I should have just done the program. And so it is something that is, it's definitely worth doing. If it can get you into a home sooner, it's, it's worth it. Yeah. And, and likely you'll make up for, like you said, that break even chart was perfect. Um, you'll make up for it with your home appreciation. You know, if you decide to move somewhere else, uh, and then, you know, at that time, maybe you won't need, um, a down payment assistance program. Um, or maybe you will, uh, and you could do it again if you needed to. But um, so thank you for that, Aubrey. I really appreciate you um, sharing your, your knowledge on that particular myth. Um, next, you know, and I think, Katie, if you don't mind, if you want to go ahead and stop sharing your screen, I'll go ahead and share my screen. I don't have as many notes um, that I need anymore. So if you want to let me share um, again, that will help you pay more attention to the chat feature um, and I can drive the slides. You want to go ahead and try that? Awesome. All right, let's get it pulled up here. All right. Okay, so we covered myth number one. Now we're going to jump on to myth number two. Uh, we have Stacy Lynn Shriver. She has been in, you know, our top three uh, loan officers for our program for the last handful of years. And so Stacy's going to kick it off with um, DPA makes sales contracts more complicated. So Stacy, tell us about why that's a myth. So I love Sarah, and I would never correct her, but it is pronounced Shriver. And if I didn't say that, my dad would probably roll over in his grave. So I am going so to tell you that. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, so you know, I get this. Con I, I I we talk to a lot of real estate agents all the time. And um, when we have, you know, a borrower that is qualified and maybe they have a relationship with a realtor that we don't know, then, you know, I, they, it seems like what happens is it gets the muddy, the water gets complicated and it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, it doesn't require come some type of special contract. You're going to uh, write a contract um, in the same way that you would normally. Um, some, same sales contract, same contract for a condo or whatever it is that they're purchasing of uh, the trek related co uh, contract. It does not have to be disclosed to the seller that they're using down payment assistance or any type of down payment assistance program in the same way that you wouldn't disclose um, if you were getting a gift from grandma. So if, if grandma was giving you gift money and you were purchasing a house or a family member was giving you gift money, you didn't, wouldn't necessarily disclose that to the seller because it's none of their business. So this is something that helps and it comes off the bottom line. Um, the other common question that we get all the time is, um, I mean, literally calls every day, uh, hey, can I, can I use the T-Shack funds for closing costs? Yes, you can. Can I use the T-Shack funds for my down payment? Yes, you can. Uh, you, you know, so it, 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 it will, it, 
it helps to minimize the cash to close. It doesn't completely eliminate your um, ability to have no funds at all. Um, you know, you do have to have some skin in the game, but it does down payment assistance covers uh, closing costs um, or down payment or the down payment. Um, and the other thing that it does is that a lot of times in situations in this market, uh, when you're doing uh, lo loans, sometimes it's, you know, better, you know, or perceived to be better for the seller if you can do a conventional uh, loan or conventional financing versus government financing, which I think is ridiculous, but still that is uh, something that you can do. Um, and I'm seeing, I'm, I'm watching the chat. And so in the chat, I also see that people are asking questions about income limit and whether it's government financing or conventional financing, the income limit is for the county of which they're purchasing in. So we do have that on our website. I'm sure that Frank will put that in the chat, chat but it's for the income, um, for the county of what the, in, your income limit for the county that you're purchasing in. Um, and the, you know, the other thing is you can um, have down payment assistance and seller paid uh, closing costs. So if the seller wants to cover closing costs or uh, which again is probably tough in this market, but if they're covering the title or an existing survey or they're wanting to provide you with a seller contribution, you can also have that um, as well as the assistance program. So it, it really, um, it doesn't require any kind of special contract. You don't have to put anything in special provisions. It's not required to be written in a third party finance. What you're gonna put in third party, third party finance is the same thing that you would normally put as to the type of loan that it is. Is it conventional? Is it FHA? Is it USDA? Is it, is it VA? And that's what I have for that. Do you, do Sarah, did you want me to cover any other questions or? I, I think that covers it. I mean, we really just wanted to make sure that people understood that it's not going to, you know, potentially make somebody lose out on, on an offer, um, you know, especially for the realtors on the call and the competitive markets that we're in in Texas. And, DPA and I do should see not one, be a deterrent. Yeah, and I do see one question on the chat that um, if, if, you've got, if you've got a buyer that, that qualifies with their income limit and they, and they have, uh, you know, there, if there's two borrowers, you don't necessarily have, you can have a non-purchasing spouse. Um, and so you don't have to count all the income. The other thing is, is that um, you can count base income. You don't have to count overtime income or, or um, rate differential, things like that. But it doesn't, requ doesn't require two buyers or if you have two buyers, um, you don't necessarily have to use both incomes um, if, you, if it exceeds the income limit, or you can, you know, if it doesn't, you're just watching the income limit for the county of which they're uh, purchasing. Perfect. Okay, and yeah, we'll, we'll kind of get to some of those questions at the end too, if we're missing some. So don't feel like Stacy or I are ignoring you. Um, I think Katie's trying to do her best to keep up with them in the chat feature, but we will definitely address those questions aloud for everybody um, to hear both the question and the answer. So Stacy Schriever, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. After five thank years of, or of knowing you, I literally have said your name wrong the whole time. I really oh, am. it's okay. It, it's the way <laughs> it looks, you know, except I after E, except after C, you know, that whole thing. I get it. Yeah, I mean, I, I have my last, my maiden name is Hightoff, and uh -huh. so, and it's spelled H-E-I, um, so I assumed that because it was I-E, it was different, <laughs> so I'll blame it yeah. on that. I'm excited, and I'm excited to be here. We love our T-Shack partners and um, all the lenders that are on the call. They're super smart. We, 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 I enjoy them as colleagues, as, as, as well as competitors, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> there you go. All right, well, thank you, Stacey. Um, you officially busted myth number two. Now we're going to jump into myth number three. We have Jamie Hodge with us with Guild Mortgage Company. So Jamie, would you like to cover myth number three, which is it takes longer to close? Okay. Well, Sarah, I appreciate you making me feel like a rock star this morning. You bet. Okay, so the first one is most DPA programs don't require special inspections. 
you know, with this extremely competitive real estate market that we're experiencing, you know, the mortgage financing terms could make or break the acceptance of a purchase contract. Uh, typically in the past, it was fairly common for agency assistance programs to require an additional property inspection to meet the program guidelines. I remember how strict these inspections could be. You know, if the knob on the stove did not turn, it probably had to be fixed. Uh, not too many sellers in this market would, would be open to all the potential repairs. But the really, really great news is that T-Shack does not require an additional property condition inspection. In fact, the only potential property condition repairs would be uh, the normal lender required appraisal requirements as with any loan. Okay, the second myth, uh, process doesn't take any longer than closing with the traditional mortgage loan, usually 30 to 45 days. You know, before we had, you know, the innovative programs like T-Shack became available, you know, the norm for closing these housing agency assistance programs was 60 plus days. I mean, I don't see too many contracts that would be accepted with 60 days closing in this competitive market. T-Shack's approval process is one to two days where the other programs could be up to 30 days. You know, the T-Shack approval is completed simultaneously with the lender approval. So the time to close is really no different than a loan without T-Shack. So in other words, no need to negotiate an extended closing day. And lastly, um, you know, make sure that the home buyer applies for DPA and completes the home buyer education early in the process. Uh, you know, I would suggest that uh, to help facilitate a positive buyer experience and a timely closing, I would encourage all buyers to get educated with the T-Shack programs up front. I mean, maybe the bar realizes that they don't need seller help with the closing cost, or possibly the MCC program gives them uh, confidence to maybe look at a higher price point. You know, they can also complete the home buyer education class up front. You know, which goes over the home buying process, financial management, budgeting. In other words, it helps the client to become a successful and confident home buyer. So I think we just busted all the myths for myth number three. I think you did. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> mainly, I mean, um, we just hear that a lot here at T-Shack where they call and say, or especially from realtors, that they're scared. Uh, about using a down payment assistance program because um, they fear exactly what you just said, that it was going to take 60 days or longer. There was going to be extra appraisals, extra inspections, uh, and none of that is true with our program. In fact, you know, on our end, we're on average seeing loans close within 30 days. Um, so we certainly don't add any time to the process. So thank you for busting that myth, Jamie. We appreciate You're you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, we're going to go on to myth number four. Ms. Gracie Perez with Town Square Mortgage and Investments. She's going to bust the myth that says um, only for first time home buyers or certain professions. Hi, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, um, I'm excited to be here. And uh, this myth I often see um, basically you know, many buyers think that down payment assistance is for first time home buyers only, or buyers think that they can only get down payment assistance if they have a certain profession. So I often see these two questions a lot um, here at the office. In reality, down payment assistance, assistance is offered in many different loans and many different programs. Um, T-Shock offers down payment assistance to repeated buyers. We have been able to help um, several buyers that are departing from their primary residence and moving up or, you know, down sizing. We see that a lot. Um, we do have a special program that I um, have it in a special place in my heart because I have been able to help teachers with their first home, and I always give them the mortgage credit certificate. So the mortgage credit certificate or MCC is an example of a program that is only offered for first time home buyers. Um, now, you may be asking yourself, well, who is considered a first time home buyer? 
this is a question that we always get here at the office a lot. And it's just basically anyone who has not had ownership interest in a primary residence in the last three years is considered a first time home buyer. An example of a program um, not profession specific would be the Home Suite Texas Home Loan. The benefits of using this program is that in this competitive market that we have, buyers being first time home buyers or not first time home buyers can take advantage of using this program or any down payment assistance program to help them have more assets available to fill in the gap of the appraisal or asking or offering over you know, market price or keeping that money for repairs um, and essentially not being house poor when you buy your first home or when you are um, downsizing or upgrading. That is it. That's all I have for um, myth four. So okay, we busted that one too. Thank you, Gracie. You're um, welcome. So yeah, I mean, just to add to that, you don't have to be a first-time home buyer to use our down payment assistance. And like she said, we've been seeing a lot of situations where um, people are needing to cover an appraisal gap. And I will clarify that our down payment assistance can't be used directly to cover an appraisal gap, but they can use our down payment to cover the down payment or closing costs, which then would free up their own funds to cover any potential appraisal gap. So um, it's just lowering their out-of-pocket money so that they have that money available for other things, like, like what she, she mentioned, repairs, covering that gap, offering over asking, that kind of stuff. Um, so thank you, Gracie, for joining us today. You're welcome. And stick around because we'll probably have some questions at the end. Sure, um, sure. All right. So next, um, we have Jordan O'Brien with Cardinal Financial, and he's here to cover myth number five, which is many people think it's hard to meet income and credit score requirements with down payment assistance programs. Thank you, Katie. Um, so I'll begin discussing myth number five. Um, so many home buyers sideline themselves because they believe um, down payment assistance is only for low income, only for those with zero savings. It is harder to qualify, takes longer to close, and only for those with perfect credit and that there's limited funding. Um, there's about 70% of adults unaware of down payment assistance programs. Um, they believe down payment assistance is only for low income folks. Um, TSHAC's down payment assistance is not only for low income folks, but also for moderate income families. Um, and DFW, for example, uh, income limits range from 93,000 to 102,000, depending upon the county. Um, Dallas itself um, has an income limit of 102,350. Um, there's also certain areas um, that are considered targeted and have higher income limits and purchase price limits. There's also a myth that consumers have that if I don't have good credit, I automatically do not qualify. Um, a lot of consumers hesitate or do not reach out to a lender because they believe they must have perfect credit or don't believe they're capable of a minimum 620 FICO. As a lender, um, we have a lot of tools and simulators um, to project an immediate score increase. Um, for example, uh, the simulators that we have could help a client go from immediately a 600 FICO to a 620. Um, we can also provide other advice on getting scores up or worst case scenario or best case scenario, we put them in the immediate hands of the best credit restoration professional possible. Um, in terms of interest rates, TSHAC sets interest rates and updates them daily based on the amount of assistance and the type of loan and the type of assistance as well. Um, for example, interest rates are the same for someone that has a 620 versus a 700 FICO through TSHAC. Uh, most of the time, TSHAC provides a better rate with assistance. If a consumer has a 660 or below FICO, um, then current market rates on a regular mortgage with your own down payment. Um, one of my recently closed clients um, had a below 620 FICO initially. 
Um, I advised how to immediately increase the scores. Um, they took all the necessary steps and actions and were pre-approved in a week um, with the tools that you know lenders, all lenders can use to immediately increase a mortgage FICO. Um, they located the perfect home within a week, seller accepted, day of closing, I receive a text that I made him and his family's dream of home, home ownership um, a reality for his family. And um, there's no better feeling than that. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. I think um, one thing that I, I did want to point out as well is that you mentioned low to moderate income. Um, could you give some, could you give them an example of like what uh, an income limit would be for you're in Dallas? So let's say Dallas County. Yes. Yeah. So for Dallas, the income limit um, for, if we're not using an MCC, it can go up to 102,350. Yeah. So that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty high. Oh, maybe you said it and I didn't hear you. I apologize. I'm looking at the chat feature too. Um, so yeah, 102,000, I feel like that's um, a lot more than what people expect when they think of a down payment assistance program. They don't, they probably think, oh, I didn't realize I could make up to that much and still use, you know, a program like this. So um, thank you. And I apologize for my um, space cadet brain today. Um, okay. So is there anything else that you wanted to share, Jordan? I think that really helps bust that myth. Yeah, I mean, to sum it up, income limit wise, I mean, in DFW, you know, the income limits can range from like 92,000, 920, all the way up to 102, 350. And we could use just one of the borrower's income to qualify. We could use just the base income for the borrower to qualify and not any of their commissions or bonuses. As long as the base income's under the income limit, um, we can utilize TSHAC. So there's a lot of ways to look at income calculations and such, but I would just leave it up to your lender um, and I'll always, you know, promote TSHAC and it's, it's a great option. And a majority of my home buyers are, they're coming back because of the great experiences that they receive and using assistance. Yeah, that's so important to mention too. It's kind of like, you know, it's a long-term thing. I mean, you're, you make somebody's dream come true, they're likely going to come back to you the next time they want to buy another house, or they may, you know, be sending your, um, sending, you know, all their friends and family your way as well. <laughs> and they may not be using down payment assistance, um, or maybe they do want to use it, but either way, it's um, definitely a great long-term uh, game to play. So, all right, let's move on. And I think it's going to go back to Sean at DPR, and he's going to share um, some best practices for the realtors on the call um, on how to establish agent and LO partnerships. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. And thanks to all of these loan officers. I mean, you guys, you're hearing from experts here. And so the, the most common question we get at Down Payment Resource when we, when we train realtors, when we talk to Real, realtors, brokers, lenders is, and this always comes from real estate agents, how do I find a loan officer that does these programs? And, and what they really mean is, how do I find a loan officer that participates in these programs, is good at them, and wants my business? That's essentially what the question means. So we know that agents have a hard time finding LOs that even offer down payment assistance to begin with. And then if, if their company offers the down payment assistance program, does it mean that that individual loan officer does? And then are they good at it? Can they help set expectations? Can they close in a reasonable amount of time? Can they close in an, uh, within a time frame that's gonna allow us to win a contract? Um, can they help set expectations, not just with the borrower, your buyer, but also with you, the agent, and with the seller and the seller's agent. And then from loan officers, we see sometimes they're not promoting their DPA expertise what you're seeing today are DPA experts. Now there, you know, all of these loan officers are probably out there promoting their DPA expertise aggressively and winning business and gaining referrals out of that. But if there are any loan officers, or if you as a realtor are working with loan officers that, that, you know, don't talk about DPA, bring it up, see if they have done these programs, see what their level of expertise is. Um, as loan officers, you know, highlight your DPA product offerings. Maybe it's not a fit or doesn't work for everybody, 
but there may be potential clients or potential referral partners out there lingering that don't know about this, about these programs. And so you're not getting that business. And then of course, a lot of loan officers over the last at least year and a half, certainly probably two years since they've been mired in refi business have not been as active in their communities and maybe not as active in outreach. And I'm not picking on the LOs here today because you're seeing the opposite today. These are the DPA experts. These are the people you should be calling on. But when we think about if we can go to the next slide, what can we do to craft these partnerships? A lot of loan officers now are starting to think more about becoming DPA subject matter experts, attending training from DPA providers, um, incorporating down payment assistance information into their marketing, and, and to some extent working with their own uh, product development staff so that they can get access to DPA programs through their, their company. Uh, we're seeing a lot of lenders considering virtual seminars and probably soon in-person, you know, home buyer seminars and events and things like that in partnership with T-Shack and other DPA providers to try to bring awareness of these programs to real estate agents and referral partners, uh, but also ultimately to consumers. So as we shift out of a refi market and into a purchase market, you're going to see a lot more activity from loan officers and especially from those that really want that purchase business. So as agents, what can we be doing? Check out, and I've already seen this in the, in the chat, check out T-Shack's top lenders. You know, reach out to, uh, I'll go out on a limb here and say, reach out to the loan officers that you're hearing from today. These are the top DPA lenders and you can clearly tell they know exactly how to, how to do a T-Shack product. They know all of the different options and pricing and ways to get a deal done. But also, you've heard them talk about setting expectations with everybody involved and getting this done in you know, 30 days or the, the right time frame to help you win the contract and win the deal and get to closing with your buyer. So uh, you know, T-Shack can make recommendations if you need help finding lenders. But at the very least, educate yourself about a few of these T-Shack programs, maybe a couple local programs in your area. If you get a chance, attend a homebuyer education course. Just listen to the content. Listen to what your buyer is absorbing, and then you can bring that into your own marketing. And then I would say seek out new loan officer partnerships and test their knowledge. Test their knowledge of DPAs, of the guidelines, of the timelines, of the, the expectations, and so forth. And then you know, partner with those loan officers that can help you craft a, a buyer intake strategy. What do we do at pre-qual? What do we need at pre-qual? At pre <clears throat> what do we need from the seller? Is title being ordered? There are a lot of ways that a transaction can go awry and it's not the fault of the DPA sometimes. Make sure title, insurance, all of those things are, are lined up and then work with the loan officers that know these programs, court them to partner up on educational initiatives and outreach initiatives. Um, and, and I would lastly encourage you to get involved with uh, T Shack's train the trainer program and, and do some of the webinars, reach out, you know, that's a great way to tap into a buyer audience. Um, so I think that covers agent LO partnerships. Uh, but Sarah, you want to touch a little bit on some of the resources you guys provide? Yeah, just to piggyback on what you mentioned about, you know, if, if you, I would definitely highly encourage you to reach out to the five lenders that are on the call today. Um, that's why we invited them because we trust them. <laughs> And they're some of our top top performers, and they're also members of our lender advisory council, like we mentioned in the beginning. But um, you know, if you're wanting to kind of expand or uh, you know meet people that are in your particular region of Texas, I wanted to show you how we uh, promote those folks on our website. So on our Find a Lender page, which you can see um, on our website. The first section is the statewide top performing loan officers. This is the, the section that highlights the top three um, for the year. So the top three loan officers remain the same for the, for the entire year. Um, and the remaining top 20 uh, rotate every quarter. So basically every quarter we highlight the top performers for the previous quarter. Um, so that information is always up to date. And so you can go there to see um, maybe what areas they serve. Um, I know most of them serve the entire state of Texas, uh, but if you're looking for someone local, you can you know, check them out there. Um, then we have our regional top performing loan officers. These are the folks that are the top three 
lenders for their particular region. So kind of like the local expert on TSHAC's programs. And these guys um, stay the same all year long. So it's based on the previous year's production. So they've helped a lot of Texas families use our program. So they're also highly knowledgeable. Then we have the next section, which is the preferred loan officers by county. If you're wanting to find someone in your specific county and you weren't able to find somebody on the, the statewide top list or the regional top list, um, you can go here. And these folks have helped at least four Texas families use our programs in the last year. Uh, we update that every quarter as well. So there's new people being added um, as they meet that threshold. It's kind of our, our way of making sure that the folks that are listed individually as loan officers on our website um, are not, you know, leading people astray. They're able to help someone use the TSHAC program well, and they've proven themselves, you know, by at least using it four times in the last 12 months. So that's how you can go to our website to start, you know, building relationships with those loan officers that use our program frequently. Um, then I'll, I just wanted to show you ready to buy a Texas home.com is where you can go to find uh, the eligibility quiz, which is under the home buyers and renters section of the website. Um, Realtors, you have your own section, and this is where you can find, um, you know, today's interest rates. You can find out about becoming a participating realtor. And Sean mentioned that we have a train the trainer uh, webinar that's available 24 seven that you can take at any time. And it essentially will give you PowerPoint presentations after you've completed the training that you can use to make presentations to potential home buyers. And you can also use them to make potential uh, presentations to potential loan officer partners if they're unfamiliar with our program. Um, scripts are included in all of those PowerPoint presentations. So you know exactly what to say on which slide. So use the tools that we've built and created and you know, use them to your advantage to help you build a business with this program. We also have um, marketing resources available to you free of charge. Some of them are pre-printed that you can order. Others are just flyers that you can download and, and co-brand to your liking. And then this is where you would go to see um, the find a realtor page. So I wanted to show you if you do become a participating realtor with us, what that would look like. So the first thing you'll see on the find a realtor page that home buyers use quite often on our site is the realtor spotlight section. In order to be spotlighted as a realtor, uh, we send out a home buyer satisfaction survey every couple of months to everybody that used our program in the previous couple of months. And we ask them if they had a good experience with their realtor and if they did, would they mind sharing their information with us? At that point, we reach out to those folks that are shared with us and we list them here. We also promote them on our social media accounts. Uh, we've had some really good experiences with this. Some great stories were shared. Um, I know one realtor told us that they got like 12 referrals in those you know, week, week and a half, two weeks that they were spotlighted on our website and on our social media accounts. So this is beneficial. And it's a great way for you to touch base with a home buyer that you maybe helped use our program. Um, just touch base with them and say, hey, uh, I know TSHAC's going to send out a, a satisfaction survey. Would you mind, you know, if you had a good experience, would you mind, you know, saying, you know, sharing my information with them? Um, and then, you know, we'll get you spotlighted if that's the case. Then we have um, the next two sections are find a participating realtor in your county. Uh, we will list you if you either take the train a trainer webinar. Uh, we also offer a CE class where you can take, it's called Overcoming the Down Payment Hurdle. Uh, it will offer you one free CE credit. And a lot of times our top loan officers will host those classes around the state. Um, you know, we may be going back to some in-person classes here shortly or soon. Uh, but for now, they're all offered via Zoom on video call, and you'll still be able to get your CE credit that way. Um, so those are kind of the two different ways that you can become a participating I've realtor. I've done a public class. class. Just want to pump in there. I've done a public class. Stacy does a lot of classes for us, um, and that's you know what we really want. We want our top lenders to be teaching these classes and building relationships with you all. So I'm not afraid. Um, yeah, get get on our website. 
Um, go find Stacy's class if you're in the Dallas area. Is it in Dallas, Stacy? I've done them. Um, I've done them in different areas. We, you know, uh, the, you, know, you we, have some upcoming ones, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not Maybe. sure. I got that. That's you're right. I should probably say that before I unmuted. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I don't know where, where your classes but are. But if they want a public home. class, they just need to ask you and see who, and one of us can do it probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want a class in a certain area and you want one of our loan officers to teach it, um, then we're happy to, you know, connect the dots. But um, so that's how you become a participating realtor. We'll list you on our website. Home buyers can find you. And then Texas Affordable Housing Specialist. That is something that the Texas Realtors uh, Association offers. If you're looking for some, some more credit, um, CE credit hours or another certification, this is something you should definitely look into um, as something to add to your credentials. Here are the marketing resources we have. Um, these are the pre-printed brochures that you can offer for free or order for free rather. Uh, and we have different pictures, obviously, depending on what audience you're speaking to or trying to sell the program to. And then we have our, our flyers. Uh, we have lots of different flyers. I'll give credit and props to Katie that's on the call um, with our marketing team. They worked really hard on creating a lot of really creative flyers that you can download in co-brand. Um, if you ever have any trouble, you can always reach out to us. We have definitely helped a lot of folks over the years co-brand them in the way that they wanted them to be co-branded if they had trouble. But um, there's lots of different options, uh, too many to even show you. So I just picked a handful, or a, I should say a few. <laughs> um, and then we have your 10 steps to buying a home. This is something we created you know, a few years ago that talks about the 10 steps to buying a home. It's in English and Spanish. It's something that they can easily put on their fridge, uh, especially if you're working with a lot of first time home buyers. I think this is helpful for them to kind of follow along and know where they're at in the pipeline. You can also co-brand co this if you download it from our website, you can co-brand it at the bottom or you can order them uh, from us for free and they're printed on kind of like a card stock. So they're a little bit thicker, sturdier. And then Sean, I'm sure you wanna share with folks um, a little bit more about DPR and what you offer and where they can find that information. Yeah, so I think Jordan actually said it best. Um, DPA buyers are coming back to him. And you know, I think that's something that you can all reasonably expect. If, if you are putting that kind of value on the table that you are creating buyers and you are making home ownership possible now for buyers just by helping them explore and understand and cover their down payment options, then they're coming back to you. And they're, you know, that's for their refi, their second home or whatever. Um, and they're gonna refer people to you because you know, if we're talking about millennial first time home buyers or younger first time home buyers, you help them with a problem you know their peers are going to face and their peers are going to find out and come to you. So uh, bearing that in mind, we have a tool called Down Payment Connect that is, is specifically designed for, there's a version for real estate agents and a version for loan officers to help you raise awareness of these programs and broadcast that to consumers. And essentially, it's a lead generation tool for you. It's a way for you to make consumers aware of the fact that these programs exist and let them connect to you and only you. So you're generating leads, not buying leads. It's a, it's a marketing tool to help you cultivate traffic and eyeballs on your site and turn that into inbound inquiries that want to learn more about the down payment assistance programs available from you in your market for them so that they can more seriously consider uh, home ownership. So you get your own landing page where consumers can search for down payment programs. Uh, you are generating leads. You're not buying them from us. Nothing that happens there goes to anybody else. So you generate traffic to your down payment search page. Consumers fill out a form and say, hey, you know, it looks like there's 14 or five or three programs. Tell me more about it. That goes to you. Pick up the phone, start that conversation and help get these people pre-qualified. Um, comes with other marketing and marketing tools, graphics, packages, tutorials, social media training, and so forth. Loan officers, if you're interested, for those of you uh, that are loan officers, uh, the, the LO version uh, shows your NMLS and branch address to keep you compliant, also allows you to customize and control which programs display, and uh, you've got a few other tools as well. So 
You can learn more about that at downpaymentresource.com slash DPC. And uh, lastly, if you're interested, we also have a Facebook group called Down Payment Insiders. And this is, I think now, well over 7,000 real estate agents and some loan officers all over the country that uh, join this forum, if you will, to share ideas and best practices, to share success stories and challenges and obstacles overcome with regard to first time home buyers and down payment assistance programs. So it's a great way to either listen in or join in the dialogue, share ideas, see what's working for other people in markets all over the country and come up with creative new ways to tap into purchase business, first time home buyer business and better utilize down payment assistance programs. So with that, um, Sarah, thank you for letting us join you guys today and to all of our loan officers. Great job. These are, you guys are the ones that realtors need to know about. Yes, perfectly said. Thank you, Sean. We always appreciate you guys joining us on this type of stuff. Um, and then, you know, our realtor, or our, our loan officers as well, uh, we couldn't do what we do without them. Um, so thank you all for, for listening, for joining us. Um, now we're going to kind of jump into some live Q&A and see what type of questions we have. I know Katie's been monitoring the chat feature in the background well for us. Uh, she said that she would kind of kick it off with a couple of questions that she didn't particularly know how to answer, but wanted to throw it out to some of our loan officers on the call. So Katie, you want to get us started with the Q&A? Sure. Can y'all hear me? Sure can. All right. Okay. So we've had a lot of questions come in. We've been trying to answer them as we go. Thank you very much to the TSHAC staff and the down payment resource staff and a couple of our lenders who have helped us uh, jump in and answer some questions. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to start with the Q&A box first, and then we'll move over to the chat box. So there's just a couple of questions that we haven't really tackled yet in the Q&A uh, box. The first one is, um, if a client already has their pre-approval letter, but wants to apply for a DPA, can they do so? And it will, will it affect their credit since they've already been pre-approved? Um, can am I good to? <laughs> yeah, anybody that wants to jump in, I mean, I'm happy oh. to kind of call on people, but if you feel inclined to answer a question, feel free to just jump in. Yeah, so um, one thing is uh, the client has about a four week window to shop for mortgages and it doesn't hit their credit. Um, so that's one thing that, that we like to let uh, clients know. Um, the other thing is, uh, yes, they can still get pre-approved with another lender that does uh, the assistance program. Um, if they're wanting to look at that, that lender that they're with may not do them or may not be an approved lender on it. Um, so yes, they, they can and uh, more than likely no, it would not impact their credit. Um, but out of everything, mortgage or excuse me, inquiries affect somebody's credit the least. So that's something to know as well as uh, a lot of people think if I check my credit, it'll drop a hundred points because we all see those commercials, but that actually impacts your credit the very least. Good to know. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aubrey. Um, okay, so the next question we've got, and I think this is something that we're getting a lot of questions about as well, is um, with all of the deaths that have occurred due to COVID this past year, um, lots of quote unquote, first time home buyers are inheriting property. Um, since they're now technically a homeowner, can they still qualify for our programs, especially if some properties are occupied by other family members? That's a great question. I'll, I'll offer it up to the loan officers first. Yes. I can so, take it if, okay, go for it. Yeah, so if a property was inherited, um, then they're still considered a first-time home buyer under TSHAC guidelines. So an inherited property um, is not counted towards the three-year rule um, in order to be qualified for an MCC and the assistance too. Yeah, I mean, as long as they haven't occupied that property, um, which was kind of the la last half of the question, if they haven't occupied the property as their primary residence, then they're still considered a first-time home buyer. Yeah, like a lot of family members will deed their um, their siblings or their daughters or something to a property. Um, but yeah, like Katie was saying, or excuse me, Sarah, um, yeah, they would still be able to qualify. Yeah, absolutely. And again, our down payment assistance program doesn't have a first-time home buyer requirement. 
Um, so we're really just talking about the MCC at that point. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, people can own a home, they can have lived in it in the last three years, if they, uh, as long as they're buying their primary residence with our program, they can still use our, our down payment assistance. No, I, I am going to jump in and just say this. If they're occupying the property and that's been deeded to them, I mean, I'm dealing with an inheritance situation and it's not, um, it's, it's a, you know, the, the, the mom had a reverse mortgage on it. So that's not a purchase. That's a refinance basically, you know, cause it's got to be refinanced you know, because he, he inherited and, and he's occupying it. So he's not purchasing it. So it does have to be a purchase transaction. I don't know if that helps. Yep. Well, I think Sarah, we can. Yeah. So what, what, what I might add, it's my understanding that the borrower can actually own a home that they occupy and have a mortgage and buy another property with T-Shack assistance as long as the current loan that they have does not have T-Shack assistance. They could lease the current house and as long as they're going to occupy the new property, they can take advantage of the assistance as long as their existing home does not a T-Shack. You got it. That's exactly, that's exactly right. Um, we, we do ask that if they are using our program for a second time, uh, that they would need to sell the property and then they could use our program again to buy their new primary residence. Um, but if their current residence, if they did not use T-Shack's program to buy their current residence and they'd like to use our program to buy a new primary residence, they can do with that current residence whatever they wish. They can sell it, they can rent it, um, whatever they wish. But yes, you're correct. Okay, I think that covers that one. Katie, you want to go on to the next one? Okay, yeah. Um, it looks like Aubrey might be um, responding to this via the chat feature right now, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it because I think we get a lot of questions about it. Um, but it's about student loans. So if someone needs to work out an arrangement for student loans to get them out of default, can they use this program? Aubrey, can you answer that aloud if you were planning to yes. answer it? Yes, sorry, chat? I was just finishing up. Um, Perfect. So the you. problem that you get into with student loans is most of the time it's um, a government debt. Um, every once in a while you'll have private student loans and that's different. Um, but if it's a government debt, what happens is FHA uh, is, is going to have what we call CAVERS and your CAVERS is going to show that you have a back uh, owed government debt. And so what you have to do is you actually have to get them out of collections. And then I believe it's six payments you have to make on them um, once they go to the new servicer. So once you get them out of collections, get them to the servicer, they have to make six uh, payments on them. Um, and then they should, once they're with the new server, they should clear cavers for you. Um, so that that's kind of where it gets a little bit um, wonky conventional loans are going to be different but my guess is that they're if their student loans are in collections you're you're probably looking more fha so they have to make six payments get them out of collections and get it to a new servicer and then they have to get their cavers cleared and that's something we can help them with awesome i would not have known the answer to that question <laughs> I, i'm assuming why it's we need you guys <laughs> student loan but usually that's that's what they are Right. Okay, Katie, do, do you have any more that haven't been answered? Um, looks like we've got a couple of questions that have come in in the last few minutes just about um, the loan types that can be used and um, DTI requirements. Sarah, can you provide a real quick overview of the loan types and also DTI and credit score requirements? Sure. So our down payment assistance can be paired with any loan type out there, we have down payment assistance associated with FHA, USDA, VA. Uh, we also have our you know, HFA preferred conventional and HFA advantage conventional. Um, those are two special conventional products that are only offered by housing finance agencies. Um, and basically what that means is it's a conventional product that offers a little bit better um, down payment 
options for a buyer. So it's 3% down payment required on those conventional products. Um, and then, yeah, to your DTI question, we don't have a debt to income max anymore. Um, we actually were able to re remove that overlay back in April. And so basically what that means is if a loan officer is able to get their automated underwriting system to approve the loan, then they're good to go from TSHAC's perspective as well. Um, there's no uh, maximum debt to income ratio anymore as long as they get that automated underwriting approval. Great. We've also got a couple of questions about documentation. We've got a question about um, self-employed borrowers or non-W-2 taxpayers, as well as a question if this can be used with uh, for home buyers with um, ITINs. So I'll I'll open it up to um, the loan officers first again. Okay, I'll be happy to answer that one. Okay. TSHAC, um, as far as the traditional underwriting guidelines, they're not looking at, you know, do you have to have tax returns or W-2s or pay stubs, et cetera. Um, it would be just the traditional guidelines for that type of loan, whether it's FHA, VA, Fannie Mae, et cetera. Uh, so, uh, so traditionally, uh, we're looking at the last two years tax returns plus a year-to-date profit and loss statement to show the income for this year. As far as I-10 programs, unfortunately, um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, conventional are not accepting those programs at this time. That would be most likely a private investor or maybe a bank portfolio top loan. So I apologize. Uh Jamie, did you did you talk about the I-10? Um, yes, that's the okay. yes, reference to the I-10. Um, that's going to be a private investor, uh, most likely, or a bank portfolio top loan. Okay. Uh, the loans that we work with with TSHAC are your traditional FHA, VA, Fannie Mae, et cetera. And those type of programs uh, do not allow for the I-10 program. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I apologize, I'm trying to read through the chat feature and sure. um, my brain is such so bad at multitasking. You think as a mom of two, I'd be better at multitasking, but um, so I will say in, in addition to that, we do have a very large kind of residency eligibility guide. So if you guys wanna reach out to us, you can email us at this homeownership at TSHAC. We're happy to send you that residency guide so that you can see if, a particular status of a person that you're working with is eligible to use the, the down payment assistance program. There's just too many to know off the top of our heads, um, you know, with the different statuses and things like that, um, but would be happy to share that guide with you. Um, okay, so uh, the next question that I was going to feed to y'all is about timing and how long the process takes. Um, We've got a realtor who, who um, is working with DHI and looking to close on June 29th. <laughs> is it too late? Can y'all talk a little bit about the timing and how long it takes? Yeah, that seems like it would definitely be good for one of y'all loan officers on the call to answer. Um, is two weeks enough to do a, a DPA program with TSHAC? I don't I think from, the issue, yeah. I mean, here, I, I, I'm sorry, I'll let Jordan go. You go, Jordan. Yeah, I think the main issue is if there's an existing appraisal or not, and if um, the lender they're going to allows for transferred appraisals. But I think from an underwriting perspective and a timeline there for income assets and credit, if they're fast on um, providing everything necessary, it would be potentially just fine. But it comes down to the appraisals taking longer. So it depends where it's located really. But go ahead, Stace. I, 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 you know, we don't have any issue in closing a loan, you know, with a contract that's written for 30 days, um, 30, you know, that's not the, that is not the issue. I think the biggest issue that we are experiencing in Texas right now is just getting appraisals back in a timely manner 
go when when you're in a metroplex area it's not as challenging but when you do get into a more um, rural environment and you know one of my branch offices is in east texas so we definitely have to manage that um, that expectation as far as being able to get an appraisal back and so forth but i get i know jordan does i get contracts all the time with a 30-day close date it doesn't take us any longer to close a loan um, that has down payment assistance than it does just to cl close a traditional loan. It's the same. An FHA is an FHA. A conventional is a conventional loan. The only difference is is that this money comes off the bottom line. So, um, and we have a specific department that we go to that reserves the funds. So it shouldn't take any longer uh, to do this over any other loan. As long as you're structuring it the same, you know, you're structuring it the same way you would do a loan. Thanks, Stacy. Um, to piggyback on that, we've gotten a lot of questions um, about how to use our programs with new construction. Um, can one of y'all talk a little bit about that in that process? The construction loan is interim financing. So you you have to have a construction lender. Now I, we're not, I'm, I don't do construction loans and I'm not sure, um, you know, in this, on the, from the panels who does, but, um, but that a construction loan is not a purchase contract. It's an, it's literally called interim financing. And at the end of the process of the construction loan, the loan, then you do what's called a takeout loan and that's a refinance because you're refinancing the mortgage or the construction into a mortgage. Now you've got people that have developed properties or have developed um, like, you know, you're in a subdivision and it's developed and there are builders in there and I can use any kind of builder as an example, but if, as long as it's a purchase contract, then you can use this program, even if it's not been built yet. So like, let's say you have a DR Horton and you want to purchase a DR Horton build or any custom home builder, and they're putting that deal on a purchase contract, then we can use the program because it's a purchase. So yeah, that's correct. You know, Stacy was saying the refinance, when you go from a construction loan to the permanent mortgage, that that point you can use TSHAC's program. You can use the DPA on the permanent mortgage part. Um, but it would just be a matter of, you know, talking with the lenders around that use our program and whether or not they would be able to do that and help you bridge uh, that, you know, that transaction. Um, but most of the, the new construction homes that we see with our programs are, are what Stacy ended with and that they're buying the home directly from a builder like DR Horton, KB Homes, uh, Lennar, that kind of thing. They're just, the, the builder is, is the construction financing and then they're just buying the home directly from the builder with traditional financing. And of course you would be able to use our down payment assistance with that as well and mortgage credit certificate for that matter. And, and what I might add when in, in reference to builders is typically if you don't use their in-house lender, they're not gonna pay the title and maybe some closing costs. What I found is with the TSHAC program, the assistance that you get far outweighs the incentives that the builder gives to use their in-house lender. So even if you have new construction, I think it's still worth the borrower exploring the options for your program because it's probably overall going to be a better opportunity for versus using the in-house lender. Yeah, definitely something to look into and question. And, you know, especially if you're the realtor helping the buyer, um, something to keep in mind and, and help them navigate. I, I changed the slides because my director is texting me going, we need to show their faces so that people know who's talking again. <laughs> so, um, and if I could just chime in, we've gotten a lot of questions and we um, tried to answer them, um, but with a lot of questions about making the presentation and the slides and the contact information um, available after the fact. So just to let everybody know, you know, we'll go ahead and send an email out um, with a link to the uh, presentation, um, a PDF of the slide deck, and then as long as all the lenders are on the call or okay with it, um, links to their contact information as well. 
Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Just reach out to us privately um, if you um, if there's any contact information you want us to include that we don't already have. All right. Is there are there any other questions that we don't or that you think need to be addressed aloud, Katie, that haven't been answered via the chat or the Q and A? Um, we've got a few questions on, you know, specific circumstances, you know, I think because we're right at an hour and a half, um, it might be best just to, um, if we weren't, you know, didn't have an opportunity to answer your question live, you could reach out to us. Um, Sarah, do you want to provide the contact information for us? Um, and then we'd be happy to address those questions with you over email. Okay, yeah, so um, like Katie said, we'll send out the slides. We'll have to work on the recording and get that out to you uh, soon as well. And then I'll provide contact information for all the loan officers on the call because I think it's important that you guys be able to reach out to them um, to start building those relationships. And bear with me, I'll get back to the last slide here that shares our, our email address if there were questions that didn't get addressed. There we go. So just homeownership at tshack.org. And then, you know, anybody out there, loan officers, realtors alike, uh, encourage you to reach out to down payment resource as well. If you're interested in some of the tools that they might, you know, be able to provide you to help you build your business uh, using down payment assistance programs. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, loan officers. Thank you, DPR. I think it, this was a wonderful training. I'm hopeful that we convinced some folks to start using down payment assistance programs and to see the value in them.